Hi guys. Okay, as I posted on Etsy, I'm going to go over the series test. This video is going to go from nth term to alternating series. And um, I don't know if I should do one, a continuation video with ratio and root test because you guys seem to grasp that one pretty good. Um, let me know um, via Edsby. Okay, so we're going to start out with just series. We're not talking about sequences. Only series. End term divergence test. So, little note here. When in doubt, start here. Okay. End term divergence says if the limit of the series does not equal zero, then the series is going to diverge. And if it equals zero, then you need to choose another test. Okay, so there's a few examples. Here we have 4n squared minus n cubed over 10 plus 2n cubed. And if we take the limit of that, clearly we can see the degree of the numerator and denominator are the same here. Uh, so we end up with negative 1 half. Well, that does not equal zero. So we would say that that series diverges. And we, we would also state by the test that we used, okay, so we'd say by, you know, nth term divergence. Over here, we know this, this is, uh, we, we know this function. But anyway, if we take the limit, we get zero. Since it's zero, it's inconclusive, we need to use another test. And by now, we know that this is a divergent p-series. p is equal to one, and so this is going to, <clears throat> excuse me, diverge. P-series, okay, what you're looking for is to be able to write something of the form 1 over n to the p. That's the format we want. If p is greater than 1, then our series will converge. If it's less than or equal to 1, then it's going to diverge. So a couple examples here, because I think everybody's cool with p-series. Um, that should be a 1. Uh, but anyway, we have 1 over root n. We can clearly rewrite that as 1 over n to the 1 half, which means we can write 1 over n whole thing to the 1 half and p is equal to 1 half, it's always going to be this power here, and since it's less than or equal to 1, we would say that this series diverges. Here's another one. We've got 1 over the cube root of n to the fourth. Well, we would want to rewrite that as 1 over n to the four thirds, uh, so that way we can put it in the form 1 over n to the something. Uh, four thirds is greater than 1, um, and so we can say that series converges. Geometric series. I don't know, to me these are pretty easy to spot for the most part. I was thinking it'd be a little incognito, but really not that much. So what you're looking for is some number uh, times r to the n, where r represents the common ratio of a geometric series. And the idea is that if the absolute value of r is bigger than 1, then the series is going to diverge. And if it's less than 1, it's going to converge. And not only will it converge, it's going to converge to a particular number. And we can find that number by taking the first term and dividing it by 1 minus r. So nice and simple. <clears throat> we have this series from 1 to infinity of 1 over 5 to the n. We can rewrite that as 1 fifth to the n. Clearly, this is our r. Our a sub 1 is 1 here, but this is our r. And since the absolute value of 1 fifth is less than 1, we would say that this series will converge, and it's going to converge to uh, this number here, which is the first term over 1 minus r. Uh, cleaning that up, we get 1 over 4 fifths, which becomes 5 fourths. So it is going to head toward the number 1 and a quarter. Uh, here's another one. Okay, I still have this r to the n, even though there's, you know, n plus 2 here. It's not just to the n, but you know what to do now. We can rewrite this as 2 thirds to the n times 2 thirds squared. And just remember that this is a constant multiple, so we could think of that as our a sub 1, and you could rearrange it and put it out front here if you want to, or you could pull it out in front of the summation sign if you want to and multiply it back in later if you need it. But anyway, what we have is 2 thirds to the n. That's my r. 
the absolute value of r is less than 1, so I know that this series is going to converge. And if I'm asked to, de to determine what it converges to, well, remember, don't forget this guy if you pull him out, but this is 4 ninths, so that's my first term, divided by 1 minus r. And if I clean that up, I get 4 thirds. Here's another one. Oops, looks like my focus is going funny. Hang on. Yikes, sorry. Uh, 2 thirds to the n plus 2. Again, we can rewrite it like this. That was dumb. This is a 9. Um, so, anyway, again, we have an r uh, value, absolute value, less than 1. So it's going to converge. And, um, you know, we can find out that it converges to 4. Could you have used another test for this? Sure, you could use root test, or, or sorry, ratio test, right? So I went ahead and did that here. Remember that with the ratio test, we have to add to the original, we have to add n plus 1 for every n we see. So I went ahead and pulled that 4 thirds out. And then we're going to divide that by the original, or multiply this by the reciprocal, but it was easier to divide here, so that's what I did. And then I expanded this out a little bit to show you, you know, that those cancel and those cancel. And we have the limit of two thirds, and the limit of the number is the number itself. Bing. So two thirds is less than one. Remember, the ratio test says that um, if L is less than one, then we have absolute convergence. If it's greater than one, then it's divergent. And if it equals one, then the test is inconclusive. So um, anyway, uh, we can tell we have absolute convergence here by the ratio test, although we cannot tell what it's converging to using the ratio test. So even if you, you know, maybe didn't know this was geometric and you decided, I'm going to use the root test, um, you would definitely come out with convergence. The thing is, is that if they asked you what it converged to, and by the way, if, if you're asked on a test, in this class anyway, um, what something converges to, um, then it has to be geometric because you don't do telescoping. And telescoping is the other one that you know you can find out what it converges to. All right, comparison test. Comparison test says you're given a series, you need to create a new one, and that new one has to be a p series or a geometric series. Okay. When you take the limit of the ratio of the original to the one you created, okay, if the limit is a number, then the original series will do whatever the one you created does. So if this converges, this is going to converge. If this, sorry, if this converges, that's going to converge. If this diverges, that will also diverge. So I think we might have done one like this in class, or maybe the same one, I'm not sure. But anyway, with the comparison test, so let me go back um, here. With the comparison test, this is the original. Now I have to create a new one. And remember the rule is take the biggest variable or number in the numerator and divide it by the biggest thing in the denominator. So n squared is going to be the biggest thing. This is quirky and actually this is cosine squared of n and it's not really going to do much. So anyway, it's this over this. And that reduces down to 1 over n, and we know that's a divergent p-series. So at this point here, if I've got a multiple choice test, if this diverges, I can say that's going to diverge. End of story. And I wouldn't say by the p-series test, I would say by the limit comparison test, because that's actually what I'm using. I'm creating a new, um, a new function here and uh, looking at it to see what happens. So this is by limit comparison test, not by p-series, although I know this is a p-series. Remember, you technically have to take that limit. So the next one that I do, I'm going to show you with the limit. Okay, so here's another one. Okay, um, I don't know what to do here, so I'm going to use, I'm going to try comparison test and take the biggest thing in the numerator and the denominator and write it as a ratio and, and um, simplify it. Well, clearly we know by now that's a convergent p-series, okay? So what I know is that this thing's going to converge right away. But if I had to show it on an FRQ, I would have to show that the limit of this thing times the reciprocal. So remember, the original 
divided by what you created or the original times the reciprocal of your creation. Um, it's like that. And ideally, you know, you don't have to multiply this stuff back together. But I just did it to show you that, you know, n squared times n squared gives you a fourth degree in the numerator which is the same as the degree of the denominator, and so the limit's 1. So since the limit equals a number, then um, I know that this thing is going to converge. Integral test. Okay, so integral test says that the original series that you're given is convergent, if and only if, the improper integral is convergent. And you only want to use this when the function that you're dealing with is easily integrable or you're dealing with this LNN situation. Um, remember, there's two criterion, right? Our function has to be positive and decreasing. Uh, but generally, you don't have to think about that too much for this class anyway. So here's a series. This is what it is. I know this is positive, and I know if I start increasing n down here, the denominator is going to get big, the numerator is going to be stagnant, and eventually this thing is going to tend to zero. So I know it's a positive decreasing function. So I check the criterion, and I pulled this 2 out because it's just, again, a constant multiple. Just to remind you, you can do that if you need to. And the idea is, is that I want to rewrite this thing as an improper integral. So that's going to be the integral from 0 to t, right? As t goes to infinity, we're going to take the limit of this result. And clearly, this is a natural log situation. So, you know, u substitution, u is 3 plus 5n, so du is 5n, so du fifths is dn. And I even went ahead and plugged in the limits of integration to get the new one in term of u, so that way I don't have to back substitute. So when n is 0, I plug a 0 in for n, I get a 3. And when n is equal to t, I get 3 plus 5t as my upper bound. So I pulled the 2 fifths all the way out here. Probably should have left it here so I don't forget about it. Because out here it's like way out there. But it doesn't really matter. Anyhow, uh, here what we're going to have then is the integral from 3 to 3 plus 5t of 1 over u du. And of course, that's the natural log of u from 3 to 2 plus 5t. I guess that should be a 3. Sorry. Um, and um, anyway, because I changed my limits of integration, I can just plug my limits of integration in and right in. I don't have to back substitute the original expression or anything like that. So now if I go ahead and distribute that 2 fifths back in, this is what I get. And if I plug infinity in, I get infinity. So since this integral diverges, that means the original series is going to diverge. Nice and simple. Here's another one. n squared over n cubed plus 1. Rewrote it as an improper integral. Did my u substitution here, changed my bounds. Went ahead and uh, integrated to get this thing here. Again, if I plug in infinity, the, the improper um, integral diverges, and so, oops, sorry, my original series is also going to diverge. Okay, that brings us to alternating series. Okay, so remember, we're going to use this when we see negative 1 or negative 1 to the n plus 1. And by the way, you know, it should be noted that I could have negative 1 to the n minus 3, and that really wouldn't matter either. So just keep that in mind. But anyhow, these are the ones you're going to see the most. So the idea is you pull out the alternating part, you take the limit of what's left. If the limit equals 0, your series converges. If it doesn't equal 0, it diverges. So example number 1. I see negative 1 to the n. I'm like alternating series. I'm pulling it out and I'm taking the limit of what's left. Well, the limit is 2 thirds. It does not equal 0. So this diverges. Another one here. I've got negative 1 to the n, n squared over n squared plus 5. Pull out that alternating part. Take the limit of what's left. The limit's 1. That still does not equal 0. So this one also diverges. And 
finally this one here. I'm pulling out the alternating part, taking the limit of what's left. Well, finally I get a zero. So I can say that this converges by alternating series test. And don't forget, there's conditional or absolute convergence. So conditional convergence occurs when the original series, so alternating series, so this just means, you know, contains alternating spin. Um, when you pull that alternating part out, it converges, but when you apply the absolute value, it diverges. If that happens, you're going to use another test to determine what's really going on. And likewise with the absolute, the only difference is, is this is going to converge and this is going to converge. And again, you're going to use another test. So for example, we've got this little problem right here. I pull out the alternating part, take the limit, I get a zero. I know this converges. If I leave the alternating part in now and I apply the absolute value, what I'm going to get is this. And you know, it's not alternating anymore, so I'm going to use a comparison test. What I'm comparing to is 1 over n cubed, so this is my created expression here. And that's nice because it's convergent p-series. <laughs> so p is going to converge, and this is going to converge. So since I have convergent converge, this is absolute convergence. Here's a conditional one. Sorry guys, I'm trying to get this whole thing in here, but... Okay, so I pull out the alternating part, take the limit, I get a zero, converges. Now I take the absolute value of the original, okay? Applying that absolute value makes this negative one. So look, this is negative one to the n, times negative one to the one, or times negative one. And when I apply the absolute value, it becomes a positive one. So I get one over root n, which is one over n to the one half, which is one over n quantity to the one half. Well, that's a divergent p-series, so I wrote it over there. And um, so, since when I pulled the alternating part out, it converged, and this one diverges, then I say it converges conditionally. So I hope that helps, and let me know if you want me to do another video on ratio and root test, um, and I will do that.